Hey guys, if you recall in my earlier video, I pulled out this Hewlett Packard 410C VTVM and I got the ohms and DC volts working fine. Well, for the last couple days I've been trying to get the AC volts to function. I do not have the original probe that came with this, but I do have a diagram um, of how it was constructed and its internal circuitry. So I tried to make my own. In lieu of this uh, vacuum diode, I put in a silicon diode. And here's the capacitor, the diode, 22 meg resistor, and the uh, 250 picofarad cap. Took a couple uh, wires, twisted them together, and ran that over to the quarter inch jack. But it's not quite working. You're supposed to be able to zero the meter by turning this knob and I just can't get it up to, to zero. On the higher ranges I can just get it to come approach a little bit closer to zero but I can't get it to, to get up there. I have gone over the schematic and checked all the circuitry that the documentation said to check when you can't zero it on AC mode. The 15K was off a little bit, I replaced that. The 10K is fine, the 20 ohm is fine, the 56 meg is fine, but I just can't get it to zero. Which doesn't leave much else, um, except maybe, if I'm really lucky, it's this capacitor. Because even if I disconnect this probe and short out the inputs, I still have the same problem, so I don't think it has anything to do with this probe. Um... But other than the offset, it does actually kind of do something. So, if I turn up my signal generator here, the, the, the meter will deflect. It's nowhere near as high as it should be, though. According to my scope, I'm putting in about 1 volt RMS. And I'm on the 5 volt range here, so I should be way up. Uh, let's see... Actually, it's not off that bad, uh, but it certainly should be up a bit higher than it is. And I assume that has to do with the zeroing control, because if that's off, of course, all your readings are going to be off. Now, in the lower range, uh, let's see, 1.5, so it should be about over here, instead of way over here. But again, the zeroing control does have an effect. So if I can just get that offset, I think, uh, to go over a bit more, I'll be all right. Uh, like I said, I've checked everything I can think of except maybe this cap is leaky. So next thing I'm going to do is disconnect it. This is interesting. It's actually a little bit warm. And when I touched it, this meter just completely freaked out. So time to get up the soldering iron and uh, check that out. I found out why the jack was getting warm. There's actually a 100 ohm resistor buried down inside there. It's here on the schematic. That was connected to a plus 6 volts, so there was always current running through that resistor, and that's why it was getting warm. Now that was part of the stereo jack here to supply power to the vacuum tube that would have been inside the original probe. Because I'm using a silicon diode, I have no need for any filament voltage to be going to my probe. So I just disconnected that wire entirely, it's sticking out here. I tacked in a replacement capacitor, and unfortunately, it did not solve the problem. I'm still not getting anywhere near as much deflection as I should be on the meter, and if I kill the input, the needle gets buried to the left, and I cannot zero it. So I am going to keep poking around and, well, <laughs> see what I can do. I kept plugging away at it, and I think I've got it working. Here it is on the AC function, meters at zero, and likewise as I go through the various ranges. What I ended up doing was essentially shorting out this AC zero control. See, before there was a 15K resistor in here, so as you rotated this control, you couldn't quite get to ground. There was always this 15K offset here. I reduced that to one ohm which lets me virtually turn this all the way down to ground. Now what this does is this was there to introduce an offset voltage to the input. And it got me thinking, why would you need 
to introduce an offset voltage to the input on the AC range unless it was there to compensate for something. Well, what's inside of this original probe was a vacuum tube diode. I looked up the data on it and it has a forward voltage drop of upwards of 10 volts whereas a modern silicon diode is more like 0.7 volts so I think maybe this was there to compensate for that 10 volt offset in the probe. I'm not sure but at any rate by essentially grounding this so I'm not introducing any offset voltage the meters on zero. Better yet if I actually introduce a signal to it I'm using my RF signal generator here, about 100 kilohertz, and about 0.5 volts RMS. And here I'm on the 0.5 volt scale, and I'm reading just about 0.5. Because I don't have this thing shielded, and it's a very sensitive high input, high input impedance meter, just me moving my hands around makes that needle deflect. So before I can really calibrate it, I need to uh, get this in a, in a uh, use a shielded coax and encase this in a shielded metal tube. Uh, okay, I'll go up a, a range and increase my scope to about one volt more or less. And on the 15 volt AC scale here in red, I'm right about one volt. So. I could do a bit more calibrating in the higher ranges. I'll use my Variac for that. The highest AC I'm going to be able to get is probably about 130 volts AC. Um, so I can't quite get up to 500. I just don't have any AC source uh, readily available. I suppose I could hook up a power transformer or something like this from an old radio, but uh, I think 130 will be good enough to calibrate it. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, I'll. Uh, I think I've got some fairly good flexible coax, same stuff I used to make the probe on this, and I'll try to dig up a metal tube and stick these components inside of it, and uh, then find a little needle pointer for the probe tip. I took a trip to the hardware store and here's what I came up with. For the main body I'm going to use this half inch copper tubing that has a cool uh, sealed off end on it. I'm going to cut it down a bit shorter, probably about here. Then I've got an end cap I'll put on. So the idea is cut all these leads a lot shorter so I can get it small enough to fit inside the copper tube and I'll have to insulate it either inside of a plastic tube or I'll wrap it in some electrical tape. I'll drill a hole in this end large enough for the coax to fit out. And on this end, I'll drill a hole as best I can right in the center so I can use some type of um, hard plastic insulation like Teflon and then stick a, a, like a pin out through the end of it for a probe so I get a nice sharp point like, uh, like on this probe. But of course, I got to insulate it from this body, which will be ground, so I have to make sure there's a plastic insulator around the end of it. For coax, um, I got some RG62, which should probably work fine. It's just a little bit stiff, so the probe will probably be kind of hard to maneuver. Or I could just cut the ends off maybe of this cheapo uh, 75 ohm uh, video cable. All right, I'm just about ready to finally put this thing together. So here's the plan. Take that piece of copper pipe, cut an opening at uh, this end for the probe tip and cut it down a bit shorter. Uh, here's the end cap. I drilled a hole in that to let the coax come through. I'm going to use this bit of brass tubing as a, sort of a strain relief. So that'll feed through the end like so. And then I'll uh, uh, braise that uh, together there. Like that. And this will fit on there. And for the probe tip, I've been playing around with some pens and mechanical pencils, but uh, basically I'll do something like that. Then I need to find a sharp, uh, like a, a sewing needle to stick through the end there. I will solder a, a thick piece of copper wire, uh, stranded wire so it's flexible, onto this clip. Oh, maybe like six inches long, and that'll be my ground clip. I'll uh, still need to 
cut these leads much shorter and make this a really compact uh, soldering assembly. Put that inside a plastic tube and slide it inside there. And then connect up this stereo jack at the other end of the coax. And I should be good to go. Okay, here's what I've got so far. First thing I did was strip one end of the coax. I cut back the black outer insulation and then peeled back the copper braid and slid the brass tubing through the other end and soldered the braid around that brass tubing. Then I slid the copper cap onto that and soldered the brass to the copper. So essentially the whole cap now is ground and it's grounded to that braid. The center conductor I attached to my network and one lead of the network goes to that same soldered uh, shield there and that goes to this big yellow cap which uh, I took uh, one end of the lead here and shoved it through the end of a mechanical pencil and uh, that forms the basis of my probe. To shield this from shorting out I'll put a piece of uh, insulation over it and then there's the outer body which goes over the whole thing like so and then the end comes out so a little more work to do one I got a solder an alligator clip onto it and I'm going to hold off uh, I'm putting a heat shrink tubing on this to make sure it's okay I've checked for short so far and that checks fine so I think the next thing I need to do is hook up the um, stereo jack here and fire the meter back up and make sure this works before I seal any of this stuff up. And there's the stereo jack hooked up. Remember whenever you're doing something like this slide the, uh, <laughs> the plastic shroud onto the cable first otherwise uh, it would be in bad shape because you can't slide it on over the other end so it's already got something soldered onto it. So the inner conductor goes to the tip. The ring is what would have supplied the 6 volts for the filament of the diode vacuum tube, which of course I'm not using, so that's left unconnected. And then the main body here is the ground. So I just slide that on and screw it on. And that is to the point where I can test this. And of course that just plugs in. I gotta uh, reconnect this after a lot of fooling around I did. And uh, So I'll remount this and fire this up, make sure everything seems to be working right, plug this in and let's give it a try. I've had the meter running for a while and it still seems to be working correctly. For example I've got it on the 1k resistance setting right now and if I hook up a 3k resistor it measures right on three. I do have the AC probe hooked up. Here's the probe itself. So let's try out the AC range. I'll put on the five volts AC. It measures on zero like it should. Now if I just put my finger on the end, it's responding, which is good. And that's just from my body picking up and transferring RF energy that's all in the air all around us all the time. So to really check the accuracy of this, um, I will get out a signal generator and compare it to my scope. Now I have not calibrated the AC range on this yet because I haven't had a probe to do it with, but so far this is looking pretty good. For an AC signal source, I've fired up my good old WR50B at about 250 kilohertz. And according to my scope, right about 800 millivolts RMS. Got the meter on the 1.5 volt AC range. And I am getting, well, right about 8. Uh, this isn't the purest sine wave, and my meter's jumping around a bit because there's a little bit of noise on that. But I'd say that's pretty darn close to being right on, so... Um, let's see, well, something else I can do is vary this frequency, and the meter is not changing much. It actually goes down a little bit, but that's because as you go higher with frequency on this, it actually dropped down a bit. So now we're reading around 765 millivolts AC, 
and this is dropped down to let's see six seven oh yeah right about seven point eight uh, I'll try an even lower level. That's about the lar largest signal level I can put out of this, but let's see if we go down a bit on the more sensitive range. So let's see, that's yeah, about 450 millivolts. And yeah, yeah, right around 0.45. And the lowest range, yeah, gee, right about 0.45. I have not calibrated this meter yet, but I don't think I need too much. So, uh, it seems to be working. I'll put the uh, the metal shroud on it and hook up the alligator clip and uh, give it one final test. And finally, here's the assembled probe. Feels pretty good in my hand. Nice to probe a circuit with. Might be thinking that ground lead is awfully short, but it's supposed to be because this is for taking very sensitive measurements. It's not just for measuring like 60 hertz AC in a power supply or a transformer. This is meant for measuring RF, uh, like in tuner circuits and such. So you want to have as short leads and shield this as much as possible. Uh, so a few final thoughts. One, thanks to Madness832 for the donation of the stereo quarter inch plug. And a few improvement thoughts. One, I should get a much sturdier tip, like maybe a sewing needle. Um, I should coat this in some type of insulating material because if I'm probing inside of something and this metal body, which is ground, were to brush up against circuit points, that's not a good thing. And I should get a sturdier, more flexible lead for this ground probe. Really quality test equipment has special type of leads that can really take a lot of flexing without the interconductor cracking like these. I think these are made of natural rubber and it's a really thin, I think it's just a single fine strand of copper inside. Whereas this is just plain old 18 gauge strand of copper so eventually this I'm sure will break off. But hey, for now, it seems to be working just fine so I'm very happy with that. And uh, I think that's it for this video. Uh, I still have to put the, the panels back on and such, and I'll put it back up on with better test equipment. But otherwise, I'd say the restoration on this HP410C is finally done. I hope you enjoyed the videos.